Hey friends, today I'm going to be showing you how to connect your vinyl audio setups step by step. Stay tuned. Hey friends, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to be showing you from start to finish how to set up your record playing equipment. Basically, you know, what plugs into what. I did a video similar to this a while back, but in that video, I kind of just talked about how to connect everything. And today I'm gonna to actually show you, which I think will be more helpful. But before we get to that, today's song of the day is Black Star by David Bowie. And if you have a suggestion for a song of the day, post it in the comments down below and you might see it in a few future video. All right, so let's dive in. Now, first of all, the most important thing you need to know is that there are four items for every vinyl audio setup. These are the turntable, the preamp, the amplifier and or receiver, and speakers. So once again, turntable, preamp, amplifier, and speakers. There are many different combinations of those four things, but the fact is you need all four to make this whole thing work. So keep that in mind during this video. Now, starting with the turntable, place it on whatever surface you're working with and make sure it's completely level. That's very important. Now, the next step is you have to actually set up that turntable properly, which is a bit more complicated than simply plugging it in. So if you wanna know how to do that, you can watch this playlist right up here, which will cover those steps in more detail. All right, so now that our turntable is all set up, let's move on to the next step, which is to plug it into a preamp. Now there's two kinds of turntables, those that come with a preamp and those that don't. A lot of the budget-friendly turntables will usually have the preamp inside, but as you upgrade to the more premium models of turntables, those usually do not come with a preamp. And the reason for that is because usually the better sounding preamps are sold separately as an additional unit. Now, now, as a side note, if you don't know if your turntable has a preamp or not, flip it around, and if it has a switch on the back that says phono or line, it has a built-in preamp. If it doesn't have that switch, then it doesn't have a preamp. And as a side, side note, if your volume's too low, flip that sucker to line, and that should fix the problem. All right, now back to my original point here. Since I have the Fluence RT85, which is a higher end turntable that doesn't have a preamp, I'm gonna plug the RCA cables, which are those red and white cables, from the turntable into the input of my Fluence PA10 preamp. And of course, we line up red with red and white with white. Now, another thing we're gonna need is to connect the ground wire from the turntable to the preamp. So that's this little metal wire right here with little hooks on each end. So line up one of the hooks to this little post on the turntable and tighten it down and then do the same for the opposite end on the preamp. Now my turntable also came with a second ground wire which should go from the preamp to the receiver. However, since my receiver doesn't actually have a ground post on the back, I basically just unscrewed a little screw on the back of the receiver chassis, slipped the ground wire into place, and then tightened the screw back to where it was. Overall, this is a good solution if your receiver doesn't have a ground post on the back, so that'll help you out. Basically, connecting the ground wire to a screw on the housing will have the same effect as connecting to a phono ground post. Just make sure your receiver is unplugged from the wall when you do this and only touch the screws on the chassis. You will not get electrocuted. I had that fear, but trust me, you'll be totally fine. Now, moving on, connect a second pair of RCA cables, the red and white cables, from the output of the preamp to one of the line inputs on the receiver. So basically, you can just pick any input you want here, like line one or line two. So I'm just gonna keep it simple and connect the cables to line one. All right, so after you've connected all that stuff, the very last step is to hook up the speakers. Now, there's two different kinds of speakers, active, and passive. Active speakers have the amplifier inside and passive speakers do not. So if you have a receiver, you need to use passive speakers because they're gonna be powered by that receiver. If you don't have a receiver, then you need active speakers, which power themselves. Now, if you don't know whether or not your speakers are active or passive, flip them around, and if they have a volume knob, they're active. If they only have red and black terminals, they're passive. 
So since we have a receiver, we're gonna be hooking up the Klipsch RP150M passive speakers, which sound awesome. And all we have to do is connect some 16 gauge speaker wire from the receiver into the speaker terminals on the back of the speakers. You can use wire strippers to access the copper wire from the shielding, or if you're really careful, you can just use plain old scissors that you have lying around your house. Now basically there's two different colors on the back of the speaker terminals as we just explained. You got red and black and you also have red and black on the back of the receiver. So red is positive and black is negative. So when you're hooking the speakers up, look at the back of the receiver and make sure that the wires are going to the correct place. I'm only using the A channel, which is the top row up here. And basically right goes to right speaker and left goes to left speaker. And of course, each speaker has those two terminals corresponding to red and black. So just be aware of that. And if you look real close on the speaker wire, it actually has a little black line, which you can use as sort of a guide to keep track of which wire is which. I use the black line to indicate which wire is negative. So you could do that as well, just sort of a helpful tip. So to recap everything we've just talked about, step one, set up your turntable by watching this playlist up here. Step two, connect RCA cable and ground wire from turntable to preamp. Step three, connect another RCA cable and another ground wire from preamp to receiver. Step four, connect speaker wire from receiver to left and right speakers. Now, I also connected my cassette deck to line two on the receiver. So if you have another piece of audio gear like a cassette deck or a CD player, or even an eight track player, you can hook that up to the receiver as well. That's why receivers are nice. All right, now the last step involves the power cords. So we could just plug everything into the outlets on the wall and, you know, call it a day. But if you really want to protect your vinyl setup, I'd recommend investing in a high quality surge protector and then plugging everything into that. They usually have a ton of outlets, like 12 outlets or something like that. And in the event of a lightning strike, it's going to save all your audio gear from getting fried. So just go with the highest jewel count that you can afford. I've got one with 4,320 joules, and maybe it's a bit overkill, but I sleep just fine at night. Now, I hope this video has helped you with your vinyl audio setups, and if it has, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And also, if you love vinyl just as much as I do, then smack this red subscribe button right here and hit the bell notifications so you won't miss out on future videos. And most importantly of all, friends, have a fantastic day and keep spinning that vinyl.